Moving to question number two, which of the following statements are correct about fetal circulation? Let us look at options one by one. Pulmonary vascular resistance is low. It is low in the postnatal age, but fetal life pulmonary vascular resistance is high. Moving to question number two, which of the following statements are correct about fetal circulation? Let us look at options one by one. Pulmonary vascular resistance is low. It is low in the postnatal age, but fetal life pulmonary vascular resistance is high because lungs are not taking part in gas exchange. So blood supply does not happen to the lungs. The pulmonary vascular resistance being high prevents that blood supply from reaching there. It is a dead end in the lungs. So this is a false statement, right? Option number two, umbilical arteries carry deoxygenated blood. It is a true statement. Lungs are collapsed and filled with fluid before life. We are talking about fetus. So it is also a true statement. Source of oxygen in fetal circulation is the placenta is a true statement. And so what are the correct options? Two, three, four. So option number B is your correct answer. So I hope you know the basic fetal circulation. The key points are oxygenated blood from placenta. It goes to umbilical veins passes through ductus venosus, reaches IVC and then enters the right atrium. In right atrium, one third of the blood enters left atrium through foramen ovale and reaches the left ventricle, which is supplied via ascending aorta to the upper limb and head and neck. This is important because this is the blood which is reaching, which has, which has a higher oxygen concentration. And so the brain receives blood with higher oxygen concentration with a relatively less mixing. On the other hand, two-third of this blood reaching the right atrium that mixes with the venous return coming from superior vena cava and it enters the right ventricle. Very small amount goes to the lungs. Through ductus arteriosus, a majority of this is transferred to descending aorta and into systemic circulation. So in a fetus also, the upper limb and head and neck receive more oxygenated blood compared to the lower limbs and internal organs. It is a statement based thing, which is a, which is a old statement based question asked in the exam. Moving to question number three, all of the following are effective in the management of supraventricular tachycardia in a 11 month old child except the age is important here. So what are the four options they have given? Adenosine, vagal maneuver, verapamil and synchronized DC cardioversion. If you know the management of SVT, you would know that SVT, uh, all the four conditions have been described to be useful in the management according to PALS guidelines as well as Nelson. However, the clinching point here is 11 month old. Remember that Virapamil is contraindicated in children less than one year of age, including those with SVT. Why? Because it can cause severe fall in the blood pressure and can cause cardiac arrest. So it is absolutely contraindicated in this age group. And so by exclusion, they are asking all are effective except. So answer to this question is C. Please remember that whenever you have a patient, a child coming to you with supraventricular tachycardia, in case the patient is unstable. When we say unstable, we are talking about uh, unstable CPC. CPC stands for cardiopulmonary Compromise. So some key points to remember whenever you have a child with supraventricular tachycardia coming to you, we look for presence of any cardiopulmonary compromises there or not. If there is any cardiopulmonary compromise or not, for example, there is any shock or low BP or any severe CCF in the patient. If the answer to this is no, there is no severe cardiopulmonary compromise. In these patients, you will go in for vagal maneuvers. And in case vagal maneuvers fail, then you will go in for IV or intraosseous adenosine in the patient. And if that also fails, then you will go in for cardioversion. On the other hand, if the patient is already having shock here, or BP is the uh, low BP or severe CCF is there. These are considered to be unstable patients. You will give IV adenosine if immediate access, if immediate access to vascular system can be obtained. If that is not possible, you will not waste any time and you will directly go in for cardioversion.
Now different textbooks have different ways whatever I am discussing here is majorly based upon the latest 2020 PALS update as well as the uh, latest review articles published from various standard forums. Thank you.